<clears throat> nobody. 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 Nobody read short stories. Hey everyone, I am Jeremy. And I'm Megan. And you're watching Nobody Read Short Stories, where writers talk about writing. Yeah, so these are our little cranky talks that we do every week in between season one and season two. And you can find all of our regular episodes on our website, nobodyreadshortstories.com. And if you're thinking there's something a little different right now, we're being scandalous. This isn't live, but you stay here. You stay here and watch. All right, let's do Cranky Talk. I'm sorry I'm so demanding on our listeners, Megan. That's okay. Okay, let's crank Cranky. Seven minutes. <laughs> time. I'm getting it right this time. Okay, and it's working. So, Jeremy, why don't you go first? Oh, so I'm going to be talking about writing and how writing can be hard. <laughs> writing is hard. Um, so I decided since I uh, switched from writing screenplays and stuff to writing book stuff that I would do short stories for the first couple years, like understand how that works. Because, you know, short stories aren't hard to write, right? Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that face, I should have had that face all along because that's what I thought was like, easy. I'm just going to work, work out these short stories every two months, um, four months later. <laughs> so, and also uh, one of the reasons why you guys won't be seeing any of my stories for a bit on Nobody Reads is that my short stories turn into novellas. <laughs> Yes, I think that's a that's a natural thing that a lot of writers fall into is that, you know, a short story is supposed to be short and it's a different type of craft than writing a longer story. So sometimes stories want to be longer than a short than sort of a short story allows, so they turn into something bigger than that. And I think that that's you have point. to be true. You just have to be true to how long the actual story wants to be and kind of let it be that length. Oh, uh, it's, it's a lot though. Um, and for the listeners, like a short story is, I think below 20,000, like it usually doesn't hit the 20,000 mark, but it's over 5,000 and below 20,000, 20,000 or above is novella. And then 40 or under that is still the novella and over 40,000, it goes into novel territory, but the, the, it's not official or anything, but yeah, I don't think in terms of page numbers, I think in terms of like, how long is it going to take me to read this? Um, so Jeremy has a more technical attitude when it comes to links. I'm just like, uh, how long is this going to take me? Is it like this thick or is it that thick? <laughs> yeah, as I as I work on my writing, there's always like an oh no moment after all my my writing for the day, because like, my piece Gertrude dies that I'm working on. It's shortly after the thriller that's going to come out in April. It was like seven thousand words. It was seven thousand words, and I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on nobody reads and everywhere else in like you know a very short period of time. So like every day I check mark how much time, uh, how many words I have, and it went from seven thousand words to twenty. No 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 no. no thousand words. Well, um, so I think it's really interesting when we start talking about how stories can evolve and, and what kind of shape they can take. I mean, the the collection of short stories that I wanted to talk about tonight is Gloria Naylor's The Women of Brewster Place. And it's it's sometimes considered a novel because it's really? seven oh, because different it's... stories oh, I love about that. seven different women, but they, they're all kind of connected under the umbrella of this of this place of Brewster Place, and and so I often wonder like how did did the nature of this collection evolve? Because mm. like like did it start out as a novel and then she realized okay I want to to be divided into these different women's stories or did she did she start out writing each woman's story and then see okay this is the umbrella I want to put them under? I just I think mm. it's really interesting how how authors let work evolve 
and how it can become something a little bit different than what we think it's going to be. I think that's great when authors do let that happen. I mean, there's a typical structure that we see in film oftentimes where things go a certain way. But what I think is super cool with writing, like being an author is that authors oftentimes listen to the structure of the piece more. Like it doesn't have to fall into a certain way of being. And I find that more interesting when they are learning the structure as they go. You can see the excitement in the piece. And that probably happened with your author too, you know, where she's like, oh, this is a short story, but I kind of still want to explore the world with different characters. And slowly it turned into a hybrid of a short story anthology slash novel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think it's, that's probably what happened. I mean, I would speculate that that's what happened. I mean, all of yeah. these stories are really beautiful stories about um, African American women living in this specific place and them kind of, um, it, they're very raw, but they're also very like heartwarming or not heartwarming, but they have this sort of like soft centers, you know, mm. it's not, it's not all about like hardship. You know, these women are very complicated and they get to show their soft sides as well as their edges. Yeah. And I, I think um, all of these women in some way are connected to place and connected to home. And um, so, so setting all of their stories in this, in this certain place, I think kind of exemplifies the, the themes that are going on in the collection. And Gloria Naylor is just such a, a fantastic uh, writer just in general, like she's a really powerful writer at, and um, she, she passed away in 2016, but um, she, I, when I was in college working at the university press, we did a um, collection of her interviews that I edited while I was working there. And her interviews are just so, Ooh. Uh, really quickly, I'll just say that her interviews are really powerful. So if you ever mm. get a chance to, um, List, uh, read some of her interviews and her nonfiction work, I would highly recommend it because she's just a, a, a really powerful person and a motivator uh, of the human spirit for sure. Wow. We did that. Right. We did All that. Right. Okay. Sorry, this wasn't live y'all, but I hope you're still enjoying it. And we had fun and this is not gonna happen over and over again. Next week we will be live again, right, Megan? Yes, absolutely. I um, will be driving across country, so we will be unable to do it live, which is why we did this short little pre-recorded. Um, but uh, yeah, but we'll be back next week, wow. live as usual. Um, so it'll be very exciting then. And uh, so if you haven't already, please go to our YouTube page and like and subscribe. Let us know um, if there's an episode or a story that you really like, please let us know, let our authors know they love getting feedback and hearing from their fans. So don't be shy. And if then, you yeah. And also the most important thing for us is that the word gets out there so that the stories from our authors get shared. So if you have friends, family, neighbors who really just love a good story, they love audiobooks. like make sure you let them know that we're here. Yes, they can go to Amazon, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, pretty much any podcast platform, download it to their phone, and then download uh, our short stories and take them with you wherever you go. If you're driving, if you're cooking, if you're cleaning, um, whatever you're doing, we can be there for you with a story. Yeah, and you can reach out to us too through e email, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're on all those platforms. We'll have the links below. And... Yeah. Megan, this time, do you want to pitch our merchandise? Uh, I think so. If you yeah. go to Nobody Read Short Stories and you're in the mood for uh, some purple and orange uh, merchandise, mm. we have everything mm. that you could you could ever want. We've got uh, pillows. We have hoodies. We have uh, jackets for your dogs. We have jackets for your phones. We have jackets for humans. Um, Megan, so I'm like picturing you going door to door, like wearing purple and orange. <laughs> Like eventually when COVID isn't a thing anymore, like we should do that. We should just be dressed up purple and orange. Oh, and I would I would love that. And then just be like handing out swag to random people and be like, hey, do you have a cat? Here's a Nobody Read Short Stories cat jacket. You're welcome. Have a nice day. Oh, you you just for some reason made one of my eyes tear up with humor. Oh, aw. <laughs> you know, I don't think I've ever made anyone cry from humor. 
So I will take that as a win. That's amazing. There you go. <laughs> um, we also have websites. So if you want to hear from these two weirdos here, you could go to <laughs> MeganAMorrison.com. And anytime Megan has new information about anything she's writing, she'll send that to you. And also, I have the same thing, JeremyRayStories.com. And I will give you updates. I also have a micro story every week. And I think that's it, right? Well, I just want to tell everybody that we are currently reading stories for season three. And thank you, everyone, for submitting all of your stories. We're so wait. good so far. I'm so excited. Yeah. I want to tell season, everyone how good the stories are, so I can't wait to start reading these. Yeah, it's going to be a really hard season oh, this year to make our choices about. We have great submissions. Yeah, it's going to be. You guys made it really tough, but that's wonderful, and so we appreciate everybody who's already submitted. So thank you so much. Um, we can't wait to read your story, and we can't wait to showcase season three. Um, and we will let you guys have more information about that very soon. All right. Thank you for listening. We will see you next week. Bye. See you next week. Bye. No one reads short stories anymore. I really don't know what they're written for. Go write a short story and throw it out the door. Cause no one reads short stories, funny, sad, or gory. No one reads short stories anymore. Yes, no one.